This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, June the 2nd, 2019. It's the feast of Saints Marcellinus and Peter. They were martyred together in Rome at the very beginning of the 4th century in the year AD 304. We don't know a whole lot about their lives, though. Marcellinus was a priest, and Peter was training to become a priest, but was only at the minor order of exorcist. What we know comes from their executioner. He stood by as the saints-to-be were forced to clear thorns and brambles from a hidden clearing in a forest. They were taken there to be killed so that the Christians wouldn't be able to find and bury their bodies. And then they were beheaded and buried in a shallow grave. Later on, the executioner became a Christian himself and shared the story with Pope Damasus, who was incredibly moved. He worked together with some other Christians to find their bones and move them to the catacombs along the Via Labicana. Pope Damasus venerated them as martyrs for the rest of his life and included them in the litany of martyrs said at every Mass from his time until 1968. Today is the birthday in 1835 of the remarkable Pope St. Pius X. Born Giuseppe Sarto in northeast Italy's Veneto region as the second of ten children. He grew up in poverty, but he took his education seriously and even got the parish priest to tutor him in Latin during his free time. By the age of 15, he was definitely on track to become a priest and took the first step by receiving the tonsure in 1850. Now, a quick aside, the path to the priesthood was very clear for a long time, and there were very specific milestones that one had to pass through. A young man would receive tonsure, which was a symbolic haircut as a sign of humility, and that goes back to the monastic tradition of shaving the top of the head. And then he would be enrolled in the so-called minor orders one by one. He would become a porter, that is, a keeper of keys, then a lector or reader, then an exorcist, and then an acolyte. After receiving the minor orders, then a man could be considered a candidate for the major orders of deacon, priest, and bishop. There's also subdeacon and some other things along the way. So Giuseppe Sarto signaled his intention to become a priest when he was only 15 years old. Eight years later, in 1858, he was ordained a priest and proved himself a brilliant thinker, an excellent teacher, and a hard worker. He found himself in the middle of a cholera plague and worked tirelessly for the sick. He was a parish priest for 26 years, in which time he was wildly successful. In 1874, he was appointed Bishop of Mantua outside of Milan. Interestingly, despite his intelligence, Sarto had never gotten a doctorate, and so he needed Pope Leo XIII to dispense him because at the time, bishops could only be bishops if they had a doctorate in theology or law. When he was elected pope in 1903, he would become one of the rare modern popes not to have a doctoral degree. In fact, he was the only pope of the 20th century who didn't, and he would be the last pope without a doctorate until Pope Francis in 2013. Pius X's reign as pope was legendary. He was excellent, it seemed, at everything. He reformed lots and lots of legal and theological problems. He did major repairs on the Vatican and on Roman churches. He published the excellent catechism of Pope Pius X. He diagnosed the heresy of modernism, which is rampant in the church today, and provided solutions that have worked where they've been implemented. There are actually three stories of miracles that he performed while he was Pope. It's hard to overstate how amazing he was as Pope. He died in August of 1914, just as the Great War was getting started, after an all-too-short 11 years on the chair of Peter. He was canonized in 1954 by Pope Pius XII. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.